Thank you, Madam Speaker and members, for all of the time you've afforded this bill. I want to thank the 43 co-authors who have moved this issue forward. I want to thank all of you who spoke for and against this bill. As has already been mentioned, this debate is like night and day compared to what it used to be. So that's to all of our credit, and I think it's to the forward motion of the issue as well. I also want to thank the California Council of Churches, which has always been in support of this bill, and the eight different Christian denominations, which is under the its umbrella, and the dozens of civil rights organizations that have stood by our side, recognizing that equal marriage rights for all Californians is a civil rights issue. I do want to address just a couple of the comments made by some of the oppositional voices. Concern about the institution of marriage, whether it's under assault. We do see higher divorce rates, but let's look at the facts. Where are divorce rates high? Where are they low? Massachusetts, the only state in the country that has legal marriage rights for all citizens, has the lowest 50 out of 50 states in its divorce rate. Where are the highest rates of divorce? In the most conservative states in the southern part of the United States of America. It is not very quality that is challenging America's families. It's loss of access to opportunity, education, health care. These are the things that put strain and stress on relationships and lead people to divorce. Also heard that we need tradition and we need traditional marriage, something that will stand the test of time. Why well, do you need to ask those individuals who believe that? Which definition of traditional marriage do you support? The one prior to 1860, when women could not independently own property or sign contracts, independent of their husbands, because they were literally and legally the property of their husbands? Is that the traditional marriage you refer to? Or the definition some thousands of years back where if a bride was not a virgin on her wedding day, she should be stoned to death. Is that the tradition we're supporting? I don't think so. We know things change, and they continue to change, and some of us seemingly don't even know things have changed. And then I want to comment about this being a choice, one's homosexuality. Mr. Adams, I would suggest this is not a choice for me no more than it has been a choice for you to be heterosexual. But curiously, though I was born into a Jewish family, my freedom of religion is protected, I can change my religion tomorrow. Not so my sexuality. So why perpetuate this oppressive discrimination? Did Mr. Laird and I love less intensely, less sincerely, less meaningfully than we would deny a marriage license, than we would deny the opportunity to marry the person we love? We hear a lot about man and government in this room. Why would we want government dictating affairs of our hearts? So I would like to conclude my statements uh, with a quote of heterosexual 18-year-old young woman who's been a star student, an athlete, class president, leader of her school, fierce fighter for her two mothers' civil rights. She also very lovingly and graciously refers to me as her godfather. These are the words of Maria Gatto, now a student at UC Berkeley. She said, as a child, I cannot understand why anyone would want to further discriminate against me and my family. I don't think that my generation should be taught that discrimination is acceptable and that some families are less valued than another. No one deserves to be treated as a second-class citizen, and no child deserves to be told that she and her family are deserving of hatred and discrimination. You see these gold lettered words underneath President Abraham Lincoln's portrait. It is our admonition to pass just laws. AB 43 is just that law. I ask where I go.